The notes are organized into units or uh, topics, and uh, the first uh, topic is the introduction. So I'm going to make notes as I speak, and <clears throat> I would strongly encourage you to uh, make the notes, make your own set of notes as you watch this. Uh, for one, so you'll have notes to study from for each of the unit quizzes. And two, it's been shown that uh, writing stuff down does help you to remember it. Um, where appropriate, I'm going to include references to the uh, course text. This is the online text by Douglas Harder. Um, and it's uh, linked to in the course syllabus and also on learn. Uh, so I'll just label this the first time. This is our uh, text reference here. And uh, what I'm going to start off with here is, I guess, a conceptual model of real-time systems and embedded systems. Technically, you could say this is a Venn diagram, although it's pretty simple. So in the center, we're going to have real-time systems. And I'll try to make something that looks like a circle here. I guess that's more like an egg. Anyway. Um, and real-time systems are a subset of embedded systems, which in turn are a subset of computer systems. And while I'm thinking about it, the <clears throat> text references are not required reading. Uh, they're just there for more information uh, if you need um, a better explanation on a topic. So um, <clears throat> let's just start with the outer layer, just general computer systems. And I'm talking electronic computer systems here. Um, think about what every computer system has and what would you think of? What component? Probably at the heart of every computer system you have at least one processor. So we got a processor. Um, these are often called CPUs. I try not to do that. It's, it's a term left over from the days of mainframes and not really um, I guess accurate or appropriate now. And um, the kinds of processors that we generally think of are actually called instruction set processors because they, um, <clears throat> they fetch instructions from memory and then they, they execute them, usually grabbing some data. Um, so you should have learned a little bit about processors in your uh, digital circuits course. Now, if you got a processor, for it to be useful, you obviously need to be able to store instructions and data. Those will come from some kind of memory, and we're going to talk about different flavors of memory uh, in the next unit, which is computer system organization. And you could have a CPU running, fetching instructions. Or I just said CPU. A processor running, fetching instructions from memory. Um, and it would be doing something, but it wouldn't be very useful if it didn't have one more key thing. And if you think about it, it needs to have input and output, or I.O. Otherwise, it's just um, a fancy little heater, consuming some electricity, generating a little heat. OK, so we got computer systems. Uh, those could include um, personal computers, like a, a laptop, um, desktop, uh, tablet, so on. Um, and you know, you've got server systems, so you've got um, cloud computing, um, you've got uh, banks and universities, for example, use reliable servers that they call mainframes. And really, the difference between servers and mainframes is the reliability factor. And that's still a big part of IBM's business, is building uh, mainframe systems. OK, and <clears throat> um, one subset of computer systems are embedded systems. 
So what do you think makes an embedded system different from just a general computer system? Well, it's embedded in something. So it is part of a larger system. So it's not going to look like your typical computer with a, a keyboard or, um, well, some of them will have touch interfaces, but um, <coughs> it, it usually has a specific purpose. You're not, um, you know, loading apps onto it uh, and that kind of thing. So uh, dedicated computer hardware with a dedicated purpose running dedicated software. Um, and then a subset of embedded systems are real-time systems. So it's got time in the name. Real-time systems respond to events and they need to do so uh, within a certain amount of time and that is called a deadline. So what makes a, a real-time system is that it has deadlines. And this course is about you know computer systems and real-time operating systems. The real-time part uh, we'll get to in about the fourth unit when we get into scheduling. Okay, so let's just um, write a few computer system examples and then we're going to um, see how they relate to these different categories of computer. So the first example is the point of sale terminal. Uh, darn, I meant to do this in blue. Okay, I'm going to just start here from blue. So point of sale terminal. I'll try to use blue for the main text and green for the, you know, the extra notations. Okay, uh, another example of a computer system um, that you might encounter in your program, um, or if you're on a student team, is the ECU. And this stands for two things, the engine control unit. So there used to be one computer in your car and its main job was to uh, control the, the timing of the engine. Uh, nowadays, there are a lot of computer systems in, your, in, a, in an automobile, and so they're, they're called electronic control units, so they're also called ECUs. Okay, uh, next um, example is EC2, and this is Amazon's Elastic Cloud Compute. So you can um, rent time uh, in Amazon's cloud and run your business from it or, or, or stuff like that. And there, there's other um, cloud computing services, obviously. So um, Microsoft has Azure and IBM has a service, and I'm sure there's lots uh, of other ones out there. Um, so here is another one, a uh, pacemaker. So uh, they'll put this into people who have um, bad tickers uh, or you know problems with their hearts, and it will help time time the the operation of the heart. Um, We've got uh, flight control systems. So I worked out in Halifax when I first got my master's and we um, produced a single board computer that was going into helicopters. And we were just building the hardware and also the um, porting the, the real-time operating system so that it worked on it. So it had all the, the IO drivers and stuff. So that was kind of my job. Um, and Usually in in the aerospace industry, uh, there's a lot of redundancy. So you know, if you really you think you'd have one computer, you'd actually have at least three or four computers all doing the same job and somehow checking that they agree on uh, what should be done next. So anyway, uh, we'll talk about fault tolerance near the end of the course. So we got flight control, and then the last example is just the good old uh, printer. And so what I want to do here is um, I'm going to number the levels of this diagram. Whoops, 
that wasn't too smart. There, one, two, three. And what I'd like you to do is pause the video here and pick the most appropriate number for each of these examples. So I'm going to assume that you've done that now. And so point of sale terminal, is it a computer? Yes, it's got a processor. Um, it's not a general purpose computer though. It has um, you know, a dedicated purpose. So we're talking the cash register at your 7-Eleven or the unit on a, on a gas pump that lets you uh, pay, pay for the gas that you're buying. So that's going to be an embedded system. There may be some elements and timing in there, but it doesn't really characterize it. So I wouldn't classify it as a real-time system. The engine control unit, on the other hand, needs to time things properly or it can damage the engine. So that would be an example of a real-time system. Uh, cloud computing, these are just, um, they're servers. They're, they're general purpose computers that you can do many different things with. So that would be category one. Pacemaker, it's uh, monitoring uh, the electrical impulses in your heart and make sure that your heart's contracting at the at the correct times and taking corrective action if it needs to. So obviously timing is very important there. So that's a real-time system. Flight control systems, uh, you obviously want those to um, do things at the right time. So um, you know, with the pilot, uh, airplanes used to be, um, I forget what the word is, the, there were, there were, when, when the pilot moved the, um, the lever, you know, there would be a cable attached that would, would move a, a flap or something, but now everything is fly-by-wire, so it sends a signal, obviously has to happen at the right time, um, so timing is important there, so I'm going to call that a real-time system. Printers, you know, don't look like a, a, a computer you would, you know, load a game onto, so it's not just a general purpose uh, computer, it is an embedded system. And again, there might be some elements of timing there, but it doesn't characterize it. Okay, so that's the end of um, this first page of the notes, and there will be one or two more for this topic.